Hi, I'm Kate from Love to Print. I'm a printmaker and teacher. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use polystyrene tile prints to print onto paper and fabric using Permsa Aqua. Hope you enjoy. In the kit, you'll get three colours of printing ink which can be used on paper or fabric, masking tape, polystyrene tiles in two different sizes, A5 and A6, a piece of mount board to help you print your tiles onto the fabric bags. So you have two of those along with a piece of test fabric for trying your designs first. You get an apron and a J cloth, a printing ink roller tray, paper tablecloth and printing paper which is yellow. The white paper is for practice printing or to draw your designs on and you get smaller sizes of both types. Tracing paper is for tracing your designs and reversing them onto the blocks and then you have the rollers. You have two rollers and three roller heads for the three colours and lolly sticks to help you put them onto the inking tray. A ruler and a biro, pencil are all for drawing your designs and a sharpener to keep your pencil sharp and finally you have a small stack of newsprint paper so that when you're inking up the ink doesn't go on the table. Before beginning, it's a good idea to create a test block just to see the different types of marks you can make without worrying too much about what the image is. I've gathered some items just from around my house because the polystyrene tiles emboss really easily and I'm just going to try and create lots of different marks on it. With the tiles, it's a relief printing process which means whatever you, whenever you ink onto the surface that's what will print. Everything you push down will show up as white or the paper colour underneath it. It's also a reverse printing process which means if I have an image on the right, when I come to print it face down, it will appear on the left of my paper, so it's a mirror image. That's important if you're using text because you'll have to reverse it, which we'll do in a minute using tracing paper. If you can hear a crunching sound, it's just the surface being pushed down. As long as it doesn't crunch too much and snap in half, then we're fine. Just try and create as many different types of marks as you can from what you have to hand. The ruler can help if you've got a straight line design that you need to do as well. And if the pencil starts to get blunt, you'll need to sharpen it because a sharp pencil gives you the cleanest lines. Bottle tops make good circles. Once you've completed your test block and you feel ready to go on to your project, you need to think about the design you want to do. The online workshops are there to help you come up with ideas. When you know what the idea is, you need to transfer it to the block. Because it's a reverse process, meaning whatever is on the right of the block will appear on the left on the paper, you will need to flip it over. So first, draw your design. Take the block that you're going to work on. You've got two different sizes. This is one of the smaller A6 sizes and draw around it. Then you know what size your design needs to be. For this one, I'm just going to do a really simple leaf design that I'm going to sketch out in pencil onto the white paper. And I can always add detail once I'm on the block. I don't need to put everything in now. I've just got the overall shape. Now take your block, take off your masking tape and put it face down on top of the block. So that's going to reverse the design. You can tape it down to help you. If you need to tape the block down, you can tape that down as well so it doesn't move. And then you need to shade over the back, just with the pencil on its side. And this should transfer your pencil lines. If you need to stop and check, keep your finger on the corner and lift up. So now you have a faint version of your design and it's time to go in with the pencil and push it down. So remember, the ink will sit on the surface, so everything you push down below the surface will show up as white or whatever colour paper you're printing onto. You can produce a line drawing or you can choose to add shadow or shade and texture by pushing larger areas down. I'm using a ruler just to help me here because I want those areas to be straight. Okay, now that I've got my outline shape, I'm just going to try using some of the other materials just to make different types of marks. Okay, again remember, everything you push down will show up as white. Everything that stays on the surface will print in your ink colour. When pushing down large areas, you might need to do it in stages, little by little, rather than trying to push it all down at one time. When 
you finish your design, you can choose to push away any areas that you don't want to print, as before, so I could push all of this outside area, or if you've got a pair of sharp scissors or a craft knife, you can just cut those areas away and create a shaped block like these. You need to be a little bit careful, so it won't do lots of fine details. So when I'm cutting down, I tend to take it in sections until I get closer to the block. For this design, I think it would be good to have another block behind it in a different colour. So all I've done is taken my tracing paper again, put it down on a new block, stick it down and rub over the back, and then that will give me the shape of the leaf on a second block. I only want some pattern in the background, so I've left most of it blank and I've just added some lines around the outside. So this should now print a solid colour. This will print with pattern and then we'll print that on top of it. Once you produce a few blocks that you're happy to work with, it's time to ink up and print them. You need to make sure that you protect your working area, so use the paper tablecloth and also the apron. This is fabric printing ink, which means it's really, really strongly coloured. So if it gets on your skin, it will wash off. It is water-based, but it's really important not to get it on your clothes. So I've laid out the three different colours. You've got two rollers and three roller heads, so you might only want to choose two colours at the same time, but just to show you for the demonstration, I've got all three out. So you don't need loads. You can always add more later. And then try and keep it in a neat strip so that the colours don't run into each other. And then you want to make sure that the whole roller is covered. So I'm just going to try and print our example block. I'm going to do that one in purple. If the ink goes on too thickly, it will drop into the lines that you've just made and you won't get a clean print. Okay, I think that should be ready. So you can move it to a clean area. I'm just going to print onto the smaller pieces of printer paper just because it's our test block. So you can print it face up and lay the paper on top, like that. Or if you want to know exactly where the block's going, you can do it face down, which is what I'm going to do. So turn it over carefully and place it where you want on the paper. And then if you can, very gently flip it over and put it down again, trying to make sure that there isn't any movement between the paper and the block. And then you're just going to use your hands. So the heel of your hand is this bit here, or your fingers and just rub all the way over, feeling so that you make sure you cover the corners. If you're worried about the paper slipping, you can always stick the paper down with a bit of um, masking tape, but normally I find as long as I'm holding onto it, it stays where it should do. If you want to check if it's working, keep a finger on a corner and then just peel back the opposite corner and have a look. Yeah, I can see it's working. Okay, so you can see the different designs that we got from our test block. I'm now going to try our leaf shape. So I could probably roll into the middle of there and I'm going to use the purple again. As the block's a bit smaller, this time I'm going to try and do a face down print. So I'm just going to put the paper straight on top and then start burnishing or rubbing. And again, Feel all the way around the edges so that you make sure you're putting pressure. You need to put quite a lot of pressure on it without actually moving the paper off the block. You need to put quite a lot of pressure down. And for each block, you'd probably get five to 10 prints out of it, maybe more. So if the first one looks a little bit patchy or there wasn't enough ink or there was too much ink, then just go back and try again. So I can see at the edges I moved it a little bit, so next time I'll try and keep it stiller. You can also do two layer printing, and that's where you print one block first and then another one over the top. So we'll try that now. So for my first block, I'm going to put it face down so that I know exactly where it is on the paper. and then just carefully pick it up and turn it over and then rub. The ink isn't dry yet, but it has soaked into the paper, which means if you want to go back over with your other block, you can go straight in 
So I'm just gonna go and print the leaf over the top of that one. Okay, and then this time I'm gonna do this face down because I need to know where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna try and put it into that slot. Just there in the middle. Okay. And I'm gonna try and pick it up and turn it over again and then rub the back. If you can see from your block that there are areas you need to neaten up, for example, I can see that I could probably trim around the edges, you can go back in and do that. If I wanted these areas here not to print at all, then I would go back in with my bar and push them down even harder. Or you might decide to make several backgrounds and then experiment printing different things over the top of them. So once you've finished a single block, obviously experiment with different tiles and different combinations. You can make repeat patterns with them overlapping one another. This is created from a large bottle top and then I've drawn into the inside. You can just do geometric shapes and cut simple shapes out of the tiles without doing any other detail. This is called a jigsaw block where it's two pieces cut from the tile so that you can ink them separately. And then we've got our overlaps and overlayering designs. They'll dry in about 20 to 30 minutes, so put them somewhere safe out of the way. And if once they're dry, they start to go a little bit wavy, you can just put them under something heavy for the night and that should flatten them out again. I've got my newsprint, I've got my test piece of fabric, and the other thing, if you've got it, is an old towel. You would put that underneath the block and it just creates a padded surface, so when you're printing, it just adds a little bit more pressure. And the other thing that we're going to use that's slightly different is a piece of card, and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. So once you've decided what your blocks for the textile printing are going to be, you would ink them up in your colours. Okay, because we can't flip the fabric, we could flip a small piece of fabric but we can't flip the bag, we're going to have to do this face down. So to get some extra pressure on the block, rather than just pushing onto it with my finger, I'm going to use the piece of stiff card. So I'm just going to put it over the top and then lay one hand on top of the other and then just try and push down as hard as I can just to get the pressure to pass through the card into the fabric. And then carefully peel it back. Okay, and now the other one. I might try a little bit of an overlap just to see what they look like together. So face down, block on the top, push down as hard as you can. When you're peeling them off, just be careful that they don't snap, particularly if you've got um, a shape where you've cut areas out. So when you're happy with your test print, you can go onto the bag. The main thing that I would suggest doing is if you can put some paper in the middle, it doesn't have to be the newsprint if you're running out of that, it can just be a piece of newspaper, a magazine, a piece of scrap paper, and you're just putting it in between um, the sides of the bag so that if any ink goes through, it doesn't go all the way through and then make a mark on the other side. Before you start printing directly onto your bag, have a think about what kind of design you want to do. Do you want to do lots of small elements all the way over? Do you want to do a neat repeat pattern? It's often better to start with several smaller pieces and build your way up to a big design. So I'm just going to start with some shapes. With When you finish your design and you're happy with that side of the bag, if you feel the ink, it's kind of touch dry already, so if you wanted to, you could flip it over and go straight onto the other side, or you could leave it to dry. When you're happy with your complete design, I'd leave it for at least uh, an hour, and then if you want to iron it, ironing will actually heat set the paint into the fabric. You iron it for two to four minutes on the top, either under a piece of newsprint, or you can go straight on top of the design as long as it's dry, and then that means that you could machine wash it or it could get wet in the rain and you wouldn't have any of the ink running away on top of the design as long as it's... Hopefully you enjoyed it, and happy printing.